content carried in here is suitable for general family viewing. Welcome once again to your favorite show on television, the only legal aid show that gives you information on matters of the law, educates you on things you know you need to know about laws that matter relating to everyday activities that you have to do in your day-to-day -day lives. Today, once again, we are coming to you straight from Kenyatta University School of Law, located here in Parklands in Nairobi. We are talking tenancy and the landlord, the law that decides what that relationship is going to be like. And we have brought in an expert to talk to us about that law. And we've done one better because we brought in a professor who will discuss with us this issue of tenancy and the landlord. Now, we are on uh, Facebook and YouTube and Twitter. Make sure that you check us and send in your comments and questions regarding the topic of the day. Without further ado, uh, I want to introduce my guest to you uh, so that he can tell us his name and also his expertise in uh, practicing. My name is Dr. Ngugi Kingara, and welcome, Prof. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is uh, Busalile Jack Mwimadi. I'm an associate professor of law at Jomo Kenyatta University of Agriculture and Technology, but I'm currently on a leave of absence as the editor CEO at the National Council for Law Reporting. Okay. Mm. So what is law reporting about? Uh, I see that you have a very nice card here. Uh, this organization tell us about its profile, its uh, activities and functions that you, served, uh, that you have to uh, do to serve the public. Thank you very much. Uh, National Council for Law Reporting, which is uh, popularly known as Kenya Law, that's the brand name, is actually a parastatal. It is a statutory body that has been created under the National Council for Law Reporting Act in, of 1994. Mm -hmm. Its mandate is essentially to report uh, cases that are decided by the courts of superior jurisdiction and the development of jurisprudence. We also have a mandate that has been delegated to us from the Attorney General's office. We do report on legislation, the laws that have been passed and enacted by Parliament. Mm -hmm. That mandate, of course, uh, also includes laws that are now being created by the county assemblies. Okay. So we do report laws, including international law in that respect. Okay, yes. very interesting there. Now, and then uh, your role as an advocate of the High Court of Kenya, how is that like for you? Yes, I'm an advocate of the High Court of Kenya of uh, uh, 14 years standing. Okay. Uh, I have also been in legal academy, at least that's my uh, primary endeavor, because mm -hmm. I have been a lecturer for the last 15 or so years. And I was actually privileged for about seven years to teach in this school. One of those things that I taught in this school is uh, landlord. Ah, very, very good that you, you are coming back home like... Uh, you're like one of uh, most, uh, one of the other guests that um, was talking about teaching here, which is a good experience. Yes. And I, you can see now we are on television, we are doing it live. Yeah. Okay, now, um, then, uh, tenant and landlord relationship, uh, is that your area of expertise? It's part of the, my area of expertise. Actually, one of the f uh, areas that I taught is property law. Okay. And property law necessarily mm -hmm. involves that relationship between a person and land as a peculiar aspect of property. Okay. Of course, it involves now uh, ownership in absolute and ownership uh, on term basis. Yes. And we'll talk about what that absolute and yeah. term basis yes, is like. Yes, indeed we will. And I think the best place to begin, I think we were having a, a bit of a conversation on where actually when one is talking about the tenant-landlord relationship, where should one begin? And that, uh, you informed me correctly, that the land in the word landlord is the place to begin, that concept within the law. So yeah. explain that. Thank you very much. Actually, one must understand the notion of land 
to be able to understand where that landlord tenancy relationship arises. And uh, when you're talking about land or the notion of land as property, is because of the peculiarity of land as an uh, as, as a substance, mm -hmm. unlike a <coughs> movable property, because it has some elements that you would not find, say, in a movable property like a chair, where I can sell you and you transfer, you go with it. Yes. In land, there's that uh, essence of permanence, of uh, it being fixed at a place, the cost being uh, almost fixed. And in most cases, unlike other property, the value will always appreciate rather than depreciate. So it has a very uh, peculiar special value. Now, from that conception, then you must understand that there are two relationships that one would have with land. Mm -hmm. There are those that are offered to the person. You come and I give you an accommodation in my property, right. which is intended to benefit you as an individual. The right that I've given you in law, we call it a right in persona, a personal right. Mm -hmm. Essentially, it implies if you move, then that right is extinguished. Mm -hmm. There are also rights in land that are rights in REM, in the property itself. Mm -hmm. So that even if you are to move or, God forbid, you pass on, yes. that right is still transmissible because it attaches on the land rather than mm, on the person. The person mm. And that notion is what now creates the relationship between land mm -hmm. and uh, the, the, the owners, uh, owners of land. Now, to go further, in that land, there may be a duration of interest that you enjoy. Mm -hmm. So essentially, if you are an owner of land, the most common interest that you know is what we call a freehold estate, a freehold interest. Mm -hmm. It is for an unlimited duration. In England, they call it fee simple. So I have given you a land. I have not limited the duration in which you'll enjoy that land. Right. But it can also be a term of years. It is almost the same interest, but I have given you to enjoy for a term of years. Mm -hmm. That term of year does not necessarily mean it must be for an, a year, the 365 days. Mm -hmm. It can even be three days, one month, one year, you have encountered t uh, longer leases, 10 yeah. years, 55 years, right. and the most common 99. But you also encounter 999 years leases and even 3,000 year leases. Mm -hmm. What they confer to you, because it's a proprietary interest, it's an interest in REM, in the land. Yes. It subsists over the land for that duration of period. Mm -hmm. So. Any freehold owner, if you are owning that uh, right in freehold and a person is whole owning it in lease, you almost have the same interest. Mm -hmm. But for the leasee, he has the interest for the duration that he's been granted. Yes. Now, the only distinction that comes in, there is a further relationship that is created in a landlord and tenancy agreement. Yes. Because now there is an ownership that is conferred upon the tenant, but there is a reversionary interest mm -hmm. on the landlord. Yes. So there is a kind of agreement between two people that will give you enjoyment in absolute mm. over this parcel of land for five years, for 15 years, for 99 years. But mm. after the expiry of that term, you mm. must use that property in a manner that I should be able to come back and enjoy all mm. rights that pertain to that property. Okay. And now, what about, um, of, of course, uh, people are thinking, well, we're not talking land law again, are we? Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> but you're trying to go step by step into to that even, land law. Yeah, to even yes. now go to a compartment or a place that sits on a piece of land yes. which is now uh, where the tenant finds himself or herself. Uh -huh. and, and, and it's also important to understand the conception of land because land is not necessarily the ground. Yes. It also includes everything that are annexed to that ground that are permanently there. Yes. So there are tests that are given in law which would determine whether something is part of land or not. Yes. So if you go to a, an, a house, that house, even without the land in mm. which it stands on, yes. is still considered as land. Yeah, living so, on the fifth floor. So yes, in the fifth floor you have yeah. proprietor, you, yeah. you have land interest yes. in the fifth floor apartment. Okay. Yes. Now then, within the law, so who is a tenant by definition of this land, a tenant relationship so, law? A tenant is the person who goes to 
uh, lease that property. Mm -hmm. The occupier who comes in to ag agree with the landlord that you will give me possession of your yes. property and mm -hmm. I'll occupy it. And I, oh, at the outset, I want to also comment that the word landlord tenancy mm -hmm. or lease are used interchangeably mm -hmm. so okay. that it is a tenancy, it's mm -hmm. a lease. Sometimes if you look at the documents that are signed for you by the advocates, you will find terms like a demise. Mm -hmm. or a determinable uh, rent or uh, a determinable lease. Mm -hmm. All of them mean the same thing. So okay. irrespective of whether I'm talking about a tenancy or a lease, we are talking about that landlord-tenancy relationship in respect of mm -hmm. land. land. And then the tenant, of course, is the person who has the place that lets the Yes. Okay, now, the, what are the characteristics of the tenancies that exist? that are within the law that uh, you faced when you were in your practice? Now, a tenancy by itself is not actually what you may call it by your agreement, mm -hmm. but it is what the law determines to be mm -hmm. a, tenant, uh, a tenancy. Or to, say, to put it in another way, we may have an agreement between myself and you, mm -hmm. and I offer you, you know, permission. So I'm not saying I'm giving you a tenancy or I'm not giving you a lease, but I'm just allowing you to occupy my land. Yes. But if the characteristics or element of the grant that I've given you lead to the conclusion that that agreement is a tenancy, mm. despite what we have written down, mm. the law will take it as a tenancy. There are certain mm. elements mm -hmm. that could lead you to know whether it's a tenancy. Yes. One of it is mm -hmm. that it confers <clears throat> upon you exclusive possession. Mm -hmm. Exclusive possession means you are absolutely allowed to occupy that place okay. and to exclude every other person, including the landlord. Yes. So the landlord cannot come at the middle of the night and knock at your door and say, I want to have a place to sleep, this is my house. <laughs> yes. He has conferred upon you yes. exclusive possession. Okay. Another, another characteristic? Uh, it must be for a determined mm. uh, area. Yes. There must be demarcation. Yeah. As I have said, mm. you see, you cannot have a tenancy or you cannot let out a place if you do not know exactly what it is. And then it must have a determined duration. Mm -hmm. We call it a term, a period within which it will subsist. Mm -hmm. And that is what distinguishes it from the freehold. Mm -hmm. Because I have mm -hmm. said it is for a number of years. Number so of it years. must be clear mm. that it will start at, at a particular time and end at another time. Actually, I'll give an example of what happened during the Second World War in England and a case law to that effect. Okay. During the war period, people tended to give property Mm -hmm. And uh, in, in lease, they let out these properties. Yes. And then they would agree that those leases would last for the duration of the war. Mm -hmm. And then they would agree on lower rent because of the war situation. Right. So at the termination of the war, people come to court and say, no, this was not a lease because it was not for a determined, mm -hmm. a determined period. period. The duration of war, even yes. though now it has come to an end, was not quite clear. The courts agreed that... Mm -hmm. A, 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 an agreement for the duration of, law, of, of, of the war is not a lease. But Parliament interjected to ensure that it saves that particular lease. So it said, and there was an act of Parliament, the, uh, the, 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 the War so, uh, uh, Act, the, yeah. indicating that all those leases that had been created for the duration of the, law, or the war would be deemed as a year-to-year -year mm. leasehold, yes. but would end at the end of the war. So they are determinable. You can bring them to an end at the end of the war. Mm. So it saved that condition that it is still mm. for a certain duration. So all leases must have certainty in duration. And mm. before you interject, there is a last element, which mm. is a bit more controversial, yes. because of the requirement for rent. Okay. There is a case called Street versus Montford. They said for it to be a lease, mm. it must be for it confers exclusive possession, which I've talked about. Mm -hmm. It must be for a duration that is certain, yeah. beginning and ending, and it must be for rent. Mm -hmm. Because rent confers or brings upon that relationship mm -hmm. the binding nature. You know, it now becomes a contract. Yes. And in law of contract, they say, if you have an agreement that is not, it does not have something 
which is a consideration for it. Mm -hmm. There is no price for that contract. Then yeah. that contract is not enforceable. So in that case, the supposition was that for there to be a contract between the landlord and tenant in a lease, yes. there must be rent. But the law has come to nullify that requirement. And they, it is clear even in our Land Act, it says with or without rent, yes. as long as it confers exclusive possession for a determined mm, period of time. In fact, uh, my interjection would have been about the contract, meaning that therefore, depending on, uh, actually based on what you had described, I said, then there must be a contract drawn. But the question is, uh, from what, maybe a clarification from what you just said, it doesn't necessarily have to be a written paper contract. Is that true? Uh, so especially if there is uh, rent. Now, if you go back to the law of contract, there is a requirement for a contract. Because we have said it's a property law, mm. but it has an element of contract in it, in yes. that the landlord and tenant agree. In the law of contract, for you to be able to enforce a contract, it is provided that it must be evidenced in writing, yes. especially if it is relating to land. So essentially it has been said that any contract that confers a right or interest in land mm. must be evidenced in writing. There must be a document, if, however the nature of that document, indicating yes. that mm. you have entered into. Mm -hmm. However, again, a challenge comes where mm. we may not have written anything, mm. but pursuant to the oral agreement, I have entered into mm. possession. I'm already in occupation. Yeah. You cannot just uh, throw me out because we have not written something down. Mm. So there are certain uh, interventions in a branch of law we call equity mm. that comes in to try and protect that occupancy right. Mm. It recognizes that there, there is an interest between me and you that are equitable in nature rather than the one by law which requires that we must have written it. Mm, okay. Yes. So then how does the law ensure that no one is uh, taking advantage of the other, a tenant and landlord, vice versa? So, uh, they are what we call rights of tenants and rights of landlords. These are called tenancy covenants or covenants in land, in mm. tenancies. Yes. Now, the covenants principally are by the agreement in the mm. contract itself. Yes. So a landlord and a tenant will do well, and that is why you normally go to lawyers, they draft for those contracts because they would ensure that there, there are those particular clauses that are required to be in a list that yeah. are incorporated. Mm. But that notwithstanding, there are also provisions of law. Since I've said a lease is not determined by just what the people have agreed, yes. but, but what the law considers to be mm. an agreement. Yes. There are certain uh, rights, certain duties and obligation. Yes. And of course, when I talk about rights and duties and obligation, mm. it means if it is the right of the tenant, yes. it's the duty of the landlord. Okay. If it is the right of the landlord, yes. it's the duty of the tenant. The tenant. Yes. Yes, I think uh, we'll capture some of that in the second segment as we discuss more on these matters of uh, uh, landlord and tenant. That relationship is an emotive issue, as yes. you know. Especially when one is told, you have to leave. Yes. <laughs> you know, it's usually like that. Um, stay tuned. Um, we are still uh, live, coming to you straight from Kenyatta University School of Law. And we're talking law matters, landlord-tenant relationship. Uh, catch us on our uh, social media platform. Send in your questions and comments on things you would like to talk uh, to us about in the final segment. Stay tuned. going to be doing an Italian dish which is none other than chicken piccata chicken piccata served together with Italian pasta together with a mix of African creamy vegetables Today we are going to talk about uh, line following robot. This project we started like two years ago. 
uh, we have been doing it for two years. You know, for us, we, we, we deal with software more than hardware. And generally what I do is I measure in the hardware part of it, the connectivity, the, uh, the body, how everything works. Arduino board we have, it control, it has different wires that comes in and that gets out. We have the power, we have the ground, all those. And then here we have the wires that con connect between the board, that is the Arduino board, and also connect it to the motor controller. Lola ni programu inayokupa fursa ya kutizama video zozote pindi tu unapokuwa na nafasi. Hadithi za kukupa motisha, drama, maisha ya vio vikuu, teknolojia, masuala ya jamii, kuzuru maeneo tofauti, spoti, burudani na zaidi. Pata programu ya Lola sasa kwenye rununu yako kwa yote unayohitaji. Uh, welcome back to our second segment of uh, Law Matters. Episode is Landlord-Tenant Relationship. And uh, as you know, Kenyatta University School of Law and uh, KUTV are in the business of doing community service. And we're doing this legal aid clinic on television. And today we have brought in an expert, uh, Professor Muimali, to talk to us about the landlord-tenant relationship, which we know is an emotive topic. And uh, all of us are waiting to hear and get more information on how to deal with our tenants or our landlords. We were talking about rights, and we left it at the rights of a tenant. Yes. Now, when we talk about the rights, we should also emphasize that there are rights that are conferred by the law itself. Mm -hmm. And there are those that are agreed by the parties. There's okay. nothing that prevents you from agreeing on certain rights and obligations. Yes. So I may say in a document, in a contract on lease, yes. that you will be the one who will do Get um, uh, something in the back there going on. I, I think they will take care of that. They will take care of that. Um, yes, so we were talking about um, Guaranteed rights by law. Yes, and those uh, that are contract. The, the tenant and landlord agree on. Yes, yes. And those contractual ones, for example, you can agree who will repair. Yes, if there are defects. So you, mm -hmm. there is nothing that prevents you from saying, even though I'm the one occupying the house, yes. the landlord will do all repairs. Okay. There is nothing that prevents you from agreeing that the tenant will do those repairs. The repairs yes. It is contractual on you. Or there is uh, an agreement on who will uh, pay the service charges mm -hmm. and all accruals. Yes. Supposing there is a, a, a destruction, who will be responsible for reconstruction mm -hmm. and all those. Yes. So those are contractuals. Yes. But most critically, perhaps, mm -hmm. is to talk about those rights that the law confers. confers yes. So that irrespective of what the parties have agreed, the mm -hmm. law actually confers that interest on mm -hmm. the landlord and tenant. Okay. Uh, now, for the tenant, mm -hmm. there is the first and most critical right, which we call the right of quiet enjoyment. Mm -hmm. That when I confer you with an, a property, yes. I should not interfere with your enjoyment of that property. Mm. It is your, for that duration of time, you are the absolute owner of that property, mm -hmm. and therefore you should be able to quietly, without interference, enjoy that property. Mm. And there have been a number of cases which have been held to constitute derogation from that right of quiet mm. enjoyment. So for example, a landlord comes every day and knocks at the yes. door. He sends people to interfere with your mm. possession. Right. You know, he sends his animal to feed around your compound mm. and all that. Yes. All of them have been deemed to be mm. going against that right of quiet enjoyment. That you as an owner of that property, yes. you can exclude even your landlord who assures or guarantees you mm. that you will enjoy that quiet possession. Mm -hmm. But secondly, there is also a related right called non-derogation from the grant. Mm -hmm. What's that? I've given you a facility for you to use it as a kiosk. Yes. It necessarily implies that I must facilitate the business in that premises for having a kiosk. Mm. Supposing I come and close the entrance 
so mm -hmm. that people cannot come in. Yes. You see, I'm derogating from the grant yes. because we knew from the outset mm. that I was to use that facility as a hotel or a shop. Yes. So there is also that right, that which is the tenant's right mm -hmm. and obligation of the landlord that he shall not derogate from the ground. Yes. And I think those are the critical things that we encounter in our day-to-day -day, uh, landlord-tenancy agreement. Mm -hmm. So a landlord comes and says, I want to do this tomorrow yes. or Saturday. If he must, he then ought to give you sufficient notice. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, he may be found to be derogating from the grant. Yes. And then, of course, there are others uh, that if I'm letting it out mm. for habitation or occupation, I yes. am giving you as a house which is uh, uh, furnished uh, apartments, yes. then I must guarantee that they are suitable for habitation. Habitation. Yes. There's one that um, people probably are waiting to hear about, um, which might be thought of as a right uh, of the tenant to do, which is uh, increment of rent. No, no. Uh, that may be considered the right of the landlord, mm. but the tenant is again protected from ab absolute and haphazard increment of mm. rent. Yes. Of course, in the first instance, and for most tenancies, the law does not want to interfere with your freedom of contracting of agreement. Yes. Mm -hmm. And therefore, it will not engage with you because you have agreed that I'll pay 100,000 for this small apartment and now I feel it's too small for 100,000, I want 50. Mm. Or if the landlord wants a bit more and you agreed that he can increase, the yes. law will not increase. Yeah. It only comes in when there are unconscionable transaction where they can actually see this person is taking advantage mm. of the other. Yes. And normally that is not done in all kinds of tenancies. Yes. There are certain tenancies or leases that mm. we call protected tenancies. Yes. Like uh, for uh, uh, accommodations that uh, the rent when they made that law in 1989 was that it should not be in excess of 2,500. What you would pay in 1989, 2,500, mm. perhaps now is going for 20 or 30. Yes. And yes. that's what the courts have held. So for those tenancies, they cannot add rent uh, 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 without consulting the tenant or even mm. going to the court for court to agree on what rent can be <coughs> imposed. Yeah. They yeah. cannot also evict you without yes giving you sufficient mm. notice or yeah. going to court to have the court now order that eviction. So there is a kind of intervention. Mm. Similarly, you'll find the same protecte protection, a protected tenancy in uh, 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 business premises, yes. where now you won't go to the courts, you'd go to the uh, 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 business premises tribunal, which will give you certain remedies that are easier to find than when you go to the normal to ordinary court. courts. Okay. And the deposit, I mean, this is also another issue. What Should I get my deposit in full <laughs> towards the end? Or should I even get, I always ask, should yes. I get it in interest? Because you've held my money for 10 years yes. and here I am trying to leave and you're saying, oh, by the way, Nitakata. Now, now, there are two things. Yes. Deposit is an issue of contract because there's no way, there's no place in the law of tenancy yes. where a deposit has been mentioned. It is a practice that people agree that for me to safeguard my reversionary interest, after mm. your duration is ended, yeah. I'll have to come back to my house. There may be things that may have ha occurred in that house that yeah. I may need to yes. replace. So it's a kind of a safeguard or security that the landlord gets in order to be able to ensure that by the time you leave, the mm. he will be able to get the property in almost a similar condition that it would have been. Not at the time of grant, yeah. but if he had used it himself and it had used it well, mm. with all the depreciation, it would be at that condition. So you see, we have sometimes small children. Uh, I remember w one of my children actually went and drew in the wall. So <laughs> when I'm leaving that house, you yes. see, I cannot just leave it with those caricatures yeah. that have been drawn. The deposit is supposed to facilitate those kind of yes. arrangement. However, if you have done all that and you are leaving the property in the same way you, you found it would it, yeah. have been yeah. had it been used by the owner. So mm -hmm. it's not how you found it. Oh, it's, okay. You see, there is that element of depreciation. After mm -hmm. staying in a house for three years, it will yeah. not be as good as new. Mm -hmm. It will be... As, uh, as, uh, as a property would be after three years. After you. So after if years. you are at that position, 
then you are entitled to receive your hmm. uh, deposit, deposit back. Okay. But most of that is actually an element of contract that the law itself does not stipulate for. So now for these cases where now we have a controversy um, or, or an issue with each other, my landlord, the law has its uh, conviction uh, terms that it throws at the landlord. Yes. Well, how do they? How are they determined, and uh, the, what is the range between the number of years, if it's years or fines that uh, normally, they are slapped with? Normally, when you are talking about landlord-tenancy agreement, there are hardly penal provisions because mm -hmm. this is a civil mm -hmm. issue. Yes. It's a matter of civil law, and therefore it doesn't revolve around one being punished. Yes. Of course, there are a number of uh, 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 penal provisions that can be provide, uh, can be made yes. so that if a landlord goes against certain, uh, like for example, if you evict against a court order, mm. then they can, uh, the act can provide for some level mm. of penalty to, yes. prohib uh, to, to, to prevent you from that kind of behavior conduct. Yes. But by and large, when we look at landlord-tenancy relationship, we should not be looking at the punishment. It gives civil remedies. Mm. For example, the landlord can evict you. You as a tenant, if there is a derogation, you can refuse to pay mm. rent, yes. you know, withhold that rent. It's, it's about the civil relationship that you have, not, the, uh, not a criminal nature of uh, mm. interaction. So your advice here is for us the tenants, or landlords for that matter, not to rush to court to settle some of our disputes? No, there are courts that deal with civil matters, mm. but depending on the nature of your tenancy, you need to be able to choose the right forum. Because even for a landlord, you may have a tenant mm. who has been staying in your accommodation for yeah. five, ten years, they don't want to pay, or they paid very little. You also entitled to that remedy. Go to the tribunal, mm -hmm. tell them this is the value of the property, this is what was uh, being paid, yes. and I want the court to reassess uh, what is reasonable rent mm -hmm. so that they don't take advantage of me. So it's a balancing act. It's not mm -hmm. just leaning on the side of the tenant. Yes. Of course, the relationship between the landlord and tenant, by its very nature, favors the landlord because he's in a position of authority. He can easily throw you out and remain with that mm. property. And therefore, the law tends to protect that weaker side. And mm. you'll see the remedies that it accords to the tenant in more cases are more uh, forceful than the one that it accords the landlord because the landlord's mm. rights can include re-entry, mm. taking back that pro property and throwing you out. He can even distress, come and take some of your properties and sell them in order to re recover that which and also the civil claim you can just go and make a claim that I have not been paid a hundred thousand and I want a court order and then you enforce it as any civil court mm, okay. Uh, order. Okay and then the uh, occurrence of dispute uh, has happened uh, what's the time limit between you know going to court and when it expires after this point you know, you can't come back and say, oh, he lived in my house for 20 years and I didn't come to court for 20 years because yes. <laughs> now I'm here, though. Uh, normally the law does stipulate for a limitation of uh, action. Yes. Where they say there are certain periods, if it goes beyond, you, then you, can, you would have slept on your right and then you cannot mm. now come to court yes. and tell us that you want us to afford. You know, it will be leaving room for litigation in perpetuity, and the court, uh, the law does not also want to encourage that. Yes. So ideally, for matters relating to contracts, and I have said the least, though a proprietary interest relates to contract, mm. if it is a contractual element, you have to bring a suit within six years. Within but six there years. is also mm -hmm. the issue of possibility if it only relates exclusively to the land, you have not done anything, you have allowed me to stay in your land, then after 12 years, I can get what is referred to as pres prescriptive right. Mm -hmm. Meaning? On adverse possession. It means I may, I am able to con now claim that an interest in that parcel has accrued to me, mm -hmm. and I can even go for registration so that I be registered as their own. Because it means for those 12 years, this person has never thought to evict or remove you, mm, yes. and therefore they should not be allowed after 12, 13 years. Mm, okay. yes. So in your assessment, how effective is this land uh, loud? tenant relationship law in our country, according to your experience and the, the challenge 
by and large is because uh, by, it, it entirely and strongly relies on the contract. Mm -hmm. Even though the law intervenes, yes. it intervenes in a very limited sense by those rights that it confers upon you. It is only prudent for you as a landlord or for you and as a tenant to ensure that you enter into an agreement that is more watertight. Mm. And in all countries of the world, the law does not want to prevent the freedom of people to agree on what they want. Mm. So even in Kenya, yes. that is a position. Unfortunately, you know in Kenya, there are not many people who have that wherewithal of mm. being able to enter into very solid and concrete mm. agreement. You want a house to rent for 10 years because mm. you're working here yeah. and you want to pay 20,000. If you want to see me as a lawyer to mm. draft a very solid agreement for you, yes. then you should also be able to part with another 20, 50,000. Yeah. <laughs> so it becomes too expensive. Yes. And those are the challenges that we encounter in the relationships in Kenya. Mm. So that is why one may want to suggest that perhaps against that backdrop, the law should be a bit watertight to mm. consider issues that are uh, particular to this country mm. and not just use the contractual freedom mm. of people yes. to allow them to do as they wish. Then uh, your advisement is what in terms of tenants and landlords, for that matter, protecting themselves from future dis dispute or what you call prospective disputes because they are engaging in yes. a, a flawed contractual relationships that will lead to dispute anyway. My first advice is for you to get reasonable protection, first of all, evidence those agreements in writing. Mm -hmm. okay. It doesn't have to be a complex contract, but just an agreement. I've gone uh, up country and I've seen those transactions that are fathers used to enter into. Yes. Some of them could not even write, so they go to the chief, and you see so-and-so was uh, present, and he signed so-and-so was present, mm -hmm. and then they say, the this thumb. elder has sold yeah. so much, and the chief signs, and mm -hmm. the elders put a, a thumbprint. Yes. At least there is a document that you can use to enforce your rights. Mm -hmm. So it is critical, as per the law of contract, that you must evidence it in writing. Mm -hmm. okay. Secondly, mm -hmm. you also need, if possible, and if you are able to ensure that you understand the nature and form of agreement that you are entering into. Mm. Because you may be entering into a license, yes. it's just a mere permission. And that license can be contractual. Mm. It does not revolve or attach on the land, but mm. it's a personal interest and therefore the landlord can terminate it as he would mm. any other yes. contract without proprietary protection. Mm. So you need to be able to ensure that you safeguard that right and interest in that sense mm. that you understand. And that is why sometimes, even though expensive, it would only be reasonable for you to consult a lawyer. Mm. You may pay an extra amount, but that keen eye to see that these, these clause that mm. may go against you, and for that long period of time, you are all, almost going to lose, then that would be, it's a small price to pay, so to say. Yeah, okay. Yes. Yeah, you mentioned license there. Uh, and um, in terms of occupancy of a place, can you elaborate on? Because I know you and I were, were trying to, uh, you trying to tell me about the distinction between that and you know, real tenancy, yes. license in occupation, so that people get to know. And because I have a question mm. regarding that, after you explain that. Yes. Now, uh, a license is normally a personal right that is conferred, the right in persona. Mm. rather than the proprietary interest that is conferred. So if the interest belongs to you, it is a license. Mm. It's a right, a personal right. In persona means in your personal. A right in rem means a right in the mm. substance, in the property itself. Yes. So anytime you may have a relationship that seems like a lease, but it does not meet those pre-qualifications. It doesn't confer you exclusive possession mm -hmm. for a dur uh, t determinate time. It is not, then that would not be a lease. It would instead be oh, a I license, see. which means it's a personal right. Mm -hmm. Now with the personal right, it is easier to terminate than mm -hmm. with the proprietary right, because a proprietary right 
runs with the land. Mm. So even if I die, my family can still claim my interest because that interest attaches on the land, not to me as an individual. Mm. So I'm hearing that if I went to a hotel and book a room and uh, I'm told you must leave at 10 a.m., Yes, I can't pretend I paid. I <laughs> even though you see, if yes. and they uh, and you can even stay in that hotel for a year. Yes, paying rent, but they'll be giving you certain attendances. It means you will be leaving your keys. They'll be coming and cleaning that place. They'll be making your bed. They'll be doing supplies, and therefore, you have no exclusive possession. Mm, yes. So that element that we talked about, exclusive possession, is lacking. Mm. But you can also go to the same hotel. But you are given your key where you lock, you do your cleaning, you do your everything there. Then that becomes a lease. Mm. So okay. it is the relationship. It's not what you have agreed upon. It is what the law perceives to, to exist. Mm. They look at the conditions. That Does it meet the conditions for a tenancy? If it is not a tenancy, it's a license. Then one final one before we go on break. There is an intermediary sometimes uh, who is called an agent. Yes. <laughs> you know, you go to this person and they find a house for you. And then they are actually the people who bring the contract to yes. you. What, what does the law say about how they operate? That brings out another legal relationship uh, where a third party now called an agent. An yeah. agent is just a person who works or does uh, something for another person. Mm -hmm. So I don't at every time have to do it personally. I can task you with going to do it for me. Yes. And the law that is applicable there is the law of agency. So mm -hmm. whatever the agent does, if it is within the authority that he was granted, then it is as if the principal, the person who sent him himself did. Mm -hmm. So agency just shortens that processes. You don't want to be running to to uh, collect rent, to mm. follow. So you send somebody who is in that business to be your agent so that whatever you would have done in that agency agreement, you say, you will do it for mm. me. So if I was able to enter into a contract with the tenant, I give you that power to enter into that contract on my behalf. Mm, very interesting. I think we are all very well informed now in those matters of tenants and landlord relationship. Uh, stay tuned and keep interacting with us on our social media platforms at KUTV Kenya Live on YouTube, uh, KUTV Kenya on Facebook, and uh, KUTV underscore Kenya on Twitter. We'll be right back with responses to your questions and uh, also comments that you may have. Uh, stay tuned. going to be doing an Italian dish which is none other than chicken piccata chicken piccata served together with Italian pasta together with a mix of African creamy vegetables Today we are going to talk about uh, line following robot. This project we started like two years ago. Uh, we have been doing it for two years. You know, for us, we, we, we deal with software more than hardware. And generally what I do is I measure in the hardware part of it, the connectivity, the, uh, the body, how everything works. Arduino port we have, it control, it has different wires that comes in and that gets out. We have the power, we have the ground. All those. And then here we have the wires that con connect between the board, that is a Arduino board, and also connect it to the motor controller. I'm running a company that is lending to people. How did I do that? Integrity. The mm. people you're working with here today are the people that will support you mm. when you finally decide to do something. What's the weirdest dream you've ever had? Weirdest dream? Mm. Ah. Uh, we had this dream, we had this dream, oh my god. Uh, <laughs> and what should you say is your general experience working at the bank? Working in the bank 
gives you a really good background to whatever kind of thing you want to do in the future. Welcome back to our third and final segment. We are still here with uh, Professor Mwimali talking about the landlord-tenant relationship and he has informed us and educated us on many matters. So this is the segment where we get to answer your questions and as it's our tradition, we start with our studio audience and questions they may have. Can I get the first question, please? All right okay. there in the back. Okay, please. thank you. Uh, my question to Prof will be, because you have referred to tribunals severally, I would like that you expound for the members of the public what these tribunals do, maybe where they sit, and perhaps what is the process of approaching these tribunals. Thank you. Mm. So the, the tribunals for the, settling these landlord-tenant disputes? Now, for those... Uh, uh, relationship, there are two kind of, uh, there are two tribunals. There's what we call the rent restriction tribunal. It ha there's one in Nairobi, and I know they're in other places. I think the one in Nairobi is around the CBD, mm -hmm. but in most cases, practitioners would know exactly where the tribunal is. Now, the rent restriction tribunal actually just deals with uh, uh, tenancy, residential tenancies over you know, limited uh, uh, rents. Mm -hmm. So we are not talking about where you are paying 50, 100,000. Yes. I mentioned earlier that uh, when that act was uh, enacted yes. in 1989, they said that it is for rents that do not exceed 2,500. Mm -hmm. Of course, that was yeah, reasonably the high. Is, yeah. Though with that kind of rent, you would stay in Makadara, in uh, Huruma, <laughs> in uh, Jericho. Mm. So most of those houses. So the court has equated, because that act has not been changed, mm. that what was 2,500 then mm. should be the equivalent of what now they can determine. Mm -hmm. So they have determined matters where the rent is about 20, mm -hmm. 25, yeah, Thousand. but not very high mm -hmm. rents. Now, it is supposed to help these people with low rent uh, mm. agreements to, instead of going to the formal civil courts to go to a body that is quasi-judicial, it's not entirely judicial, and mm -hmm. therefore it doesn't rigidly follow procedure. So right. you can even represent yourself. Mm -hmm. Just make your documents, these are uh, planes, and in most cases there are people who can help you to just make those mm -hmm. uh, uh, pleadings and submit it to the rent restriction tri tribunal mm -hmm. without necessarily needing a lawyer to represent you. You can also have a lawyer, mm -hmm. but even the people who sit and pretend over that tribunal are not exclusively law lawyers. Of course, the chair of the tribunal must be a lawyer, but they can be non-lawyers, those mm -hmm. pa persons who are uh, some experience outside law related to these issues that would sit there. So you are able to go to those tribunals to determine what is fair rent, for example, mm. to pro prevent eviction, yes. uh, to uh, also allow for eviction, so you can, you, you can go whether as a landlord or a tenant to determine those issues, and it is a little bit better. The second tribunal is a business premises tribunal. Mm -hmm. Again, the Act provides for a framework for business tribunals, uh, for business premises for durations of about five years. So they don't want you to come into an accommodation, mm -hmm. uh, have your business run so well. And then after two years, yes. somebody you've developed your goodwill, and then the landlord tells you, no, 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 you have to move out of this building so that he can either give it at a higher rent mm. because of the goodwill that you have developed, yes. or even himself run that business because already you, he has customer. Yes. So it protects those tenancies, and that is why we call them protected tenancy. You don't have to go to court. You can go to these tribunals. Mm. The processes are much more flexible than the ones that you okay. employ, and they take lesser time. Okay, very informative. Now, another question? Uh, my question will be about lease. So what happens um, 
for these companies like Kakuzi, Del Monte that take maybe a 99 year period lease and then it expires, do they have a chance to renew it or what happens after that, considering they are huge companies? Actually, that's a very good question. A lease is for a duration. After the expiry of that duration, then the owner, the landlord, is entitled to have it. Now, when you talk about uh, entities like Kakuzi, the leases they have mm. has a public element to it, in that the grants have been given out of public land. In as much as they have been given as a private lease, it's on public land. So there are certain elements or level of protection. For public land, in most cases, there is a right that is conferred on a tenant at the expiry of that leasehold. If the government doesn't need that property urgently, there's a right called the right of preemption. You will be given the first opportunity to renew that lease unless the government requires it. It's only when you don't show any interest. Because you see a 99-year lease, like the ones in River Road and Grogon, mm. you would have built a house there. You know, the, the, the rate and the value that you have at that property is too high for them to just after 99 years. And some of those leases in Grogon and uh, River Road were given in 2020 under the Crown Land Ordinance. Uh, to the Wazungus because that was CBD for 99 years. So 2020, they expired in 2019. Some were given in 2015. They expired in uh, 2014. And you remember that time there were a lot of issues at the Ministry of Land because most of those leases that were conferred were expiring. But to answer your question in short, you have a right of preemption. If it's a private lease between me and you, Mm. Of course, there is no compulsion in that element because there is no element of public law intervening. So you cannot force me to, to renew a lease just because it has expired. But for government leases, then there is that element of the right of preemption that is afforded to the tenant that you will be given the first opportunity to renew that lease before it can be offered to anybody else or unless the government needs that property now for public utility. Okay, now I, there's a, an online one here <laughs> from a Brian Kirui. It might sound silly, but I know maybe it's true. So he's asking, is it true that when a landlord wants to evacuate a tenant, that a tenant will be given at least three months to stay without paying rent? Why would someone think that way? <laughs> no, because uh, actually in an agreement, at the end of it, it is uh, the landlord's right to also receive the rent. We talked about the tenant's rights. One of the landlord's core rights is the right to demand and receive rent. And if you don't pay, he has even the right to repossess the right of re-entry. Yes. So any time you enter into an agreement, then you are bound by that agreement in mm. that sense. You yes. have no right to continue to stay without mm. paying rent. I know perhaps his view emerges from the fact that in many cases mm. a landlord would require you to pay three months deposit yeah, yes. and then it becomes very difficult for them to give back the deposit. So you, you in lieu of receiving back that deposit, yes. you want to stay for that period of time. But remember there's the other element I've, I, I talked about which you may then be required to do some renovations to mm. leave that house in a condition that it would have been if it had been used appropriately. Okay. So you may have to do your, the painting yourself, mm. but sometimes then you would leave the uh, deposit to the landlord yes. so that he would use it for those repairs. repairs yeah. So those are some of the considerations that you uh, want to make. Some think that I'd rather paint because you see I will we'll not have to paint it as if mm. it was new. Yeah. I'll just paint it to put it in a condition if, if you have occupied for, for five years and it was a new house when you occupied it. Yes. I want to leave it how a five-year-old house would be. Mm. So you don't have to use so much money. But if it's the landlord, they would want to do, you know, to, to make it as good as new for the next yes. tenant who is coming in. Okay, sorry, Brian, you still have to pay your, some of your rent money. Yes. Final question. Yes, so I have a question to Prof, and I'll ask it in two folds. So the first fold, um, now that the country is still recovering from the COVID-19, did the COVID-19 in any way affect the law on tenancy, uh, more so the relationship between the tenant and the landlord? Then this, the latter fold of my question is, um, now that people who are rendered jobless overnight is there any room whatsoever for a 
tenant to be exempted from being rent. Thank you. Uh, in the first instance, perhaps the answer is no. And there was uh, uh, a move by uh, many people to have government intervene uh, because of the challenge that were many people faced during that uh, period. And uh, of course, the government also asked or requested in the form of an order. You know, the government orders even if it is requested. It is requested. <laughs> so it requested uh, landlords not to increase their rent. Of course, that is a request that the landlord can work on or can refuse to work on. Uh, there are, of course, some incentives that the government would give to try and allay that problem so that it says if as a landlord you um, allow your tenants to stay for the duration with um, reduced rent or you have allowed them to stay without rent, then they will give you rebates on the tax that is payable on rental income. And therefore you have a benefit and they can say they will reduce that for five years and all that. And that was the debate that was being had that the government should intervene. It can't compel because these are private relationship unless it's a public uh, housing project where it is a government itself that owns it then it can by policy uh, or, uh, 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 remove that requirement for payment of rent mm. having said that sometimes it is also in the interest of the landlord mm. because uh, yes these are good tenants you have had in for 10 15 years they have been paying and you understand that because mm. of covid their business went aground would you want to have another tenant that you would not know whether they would be paying promptly mm -hmm. as this old one, or would you rather have him and then have an arrangement that for these two years I can reduce your rent and then when things uh, stabilize, I, you, can, you can now go back and revert to the mm -hmm. payment. So it's a case of uh, mutual benefits yes. and recognizing what yes. each one got from the other before COVID, is it? And there are quite a number of uh, accommodations yes. in town. Yeah. where like uh, people because of COVID left and they have no occupancy. Mm. So if you follow up on rent to the extent that that tenant cannot come back, then you lose out also. Okay, um, there is a, a short one here, very quickly, yeah? um, from Adon J. Kavagi. And he is talking about after how long is the landlord entitled to evacuate a tenant who has defaulted rent payment? Uh, what the law requires is a reasonable notice to be given to the tenant mm. before they can be evicted. So eviction is on the basis of reasonable notice. Now the question would be what would fall, uh, would constitute reasonable notice. Mm. Basically the courts would look at the kind of arrangement that you have. For example, if it is a month to month, mm. then at the end of the month you have not paid, the, uh, the, the landlord can give you notice mm. to pay and mm. uh, leave. Mm. Now, of course, uh, what would be reasonable? Then maybe a month, mm. uh, because it's a month to month. There are those arrangements where you pay in a quarterly, half a year, or an annual basis. Mm. Then the reasonableness of the mm. period would be much higher. So it depends on the facts and circumstances of each case and okay. how we would convince the court. Yeah, well said. And also the contract and the relationship one has with the landlord, I yes. think that counts for much. I think we cannot exhaust this landlord-tenant uh, relationship law and we'll have to leave it there. Maybe perhaps another day we'll come back with uh, part two of the topic. But with that, we want to bid you uh, goodbye. But we cannot do that without thanking uh, people who made this po show possible. Our studio audience who are always vibrant with questions that keep us on the toes of our minds. And for our funders who make this show possible. Uh, for the Kenyatta University School of Law and the Legal Aid Clinic, thank you very much. Uh, stay tuned next Tuesday when we handle another topic on law matters. Goodbye.